how often do you push something back again and again and see how long you can wait and still get it done? Because that's, that's kind of what I've done with this video, frankly. <music> Nevertheless, we have games, so we shall speak about them. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, you are a good sport. This is College Football Media, and on this channel we talk college football teams, trends, and traditions, all the way to logos, history, and predictions. If that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing for in-depth college football content. Now let's get on with it. Well, let's start out with a top 10 matchup in the Big Ten. Indiana and Ohio State. And yes, everybody's talked about this game, how it's not what you expected coming into the Big Ten with top 10 matchups and, and all that jazz. Um, but, you know, this game, it, it is meaningful. Um, right now, technically, Indiana has the slight edge over Ohio State just because they've played one more game, um, which is kind of funny, but, you know, it's, it's college football. It's 2020, what do you expect? Um, but this game, well, with, while, yes, it matters and it will be fun to watch, the talent gap is just probably too big, so it should go Ohio State's way pretty easily. On the other side, you have Wisconsin and Northwestern in a somewhat similar situation uh, of the type of game that they're playing this week. Um, of, again, talent-wise, I would give the edge to Wisconsin to win this game um, and set themselves up to make the Big Ten Championship to eventually play Ohio State. Um, but nevertheless, you know, if an upset happens in one of these games, it will probably be hard for the loser to come back and get back in the race if, say, the upset does happen. Um, on either side, whether Northwestern or Indiana wins, um, probably more so on Northwestern side, if they win, that they would be able to win out and make the Big Ten Championship game. Um, but either way, if Indiana or Northwestern wins, I mean, they're in a great position um, to win out, make the Big Ten Championship game, and that would kind of leave the favorite in the dust, and you would have to see how that shakes out. So, definitely uh, will be fun to keep our, our eyes on the games. Um, but I do give the edge to the talent-rich schools in this situation. The other big Power 5 game um, is Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, as we all refer to it as Bedlam. Um, and it is a Bedlam-type game. Now, this year specifically, I don't think it has as much of a national scope or scale to it, um, simply because the Big 12 has kind of positioned themselves out of the playoff race, at least in the forefront. Um, if the Big 12 wants to make it, they need Oklahoma State to win um, and win out effectively. Um, but I don't really expect that to happen. I'll give the edge to Oklahoma because I think they've gotten better throughout the season um, with not necessarily a rocky start, but of course not up to the same expectations that they've been able to set over like three years of making the playoffs in a row. Um, so I'll give the edge to OU. Um, but this game, you know, at the end of the day, probably won't affect the national scale too significantly. Of course, everybody within the state, and if you're in the Big 12, yes, it, it definitely matters. It is still a big game um, and will be interesting, of course, to see how it plays out. Um, I'll give the edge to Oklahoma. And we've got a, a couple fun group of five games that I really want to highlight this week. First is App State at Coastal. Coastal Carolina, yes, the Chanticleers, um, the Till Turf, um, making a showing this year. I think they're undefeated right now, um, leading their conference. App State wants to play upset alert. App State, a very, very good team, a very good program, super consistent in the group of five. You have to give a hands down to them. They have some awesome videographers, by the way, if you want to check that out. Um, but, you know, besides that, uh, App State is just an amazing program and what they've been able to build really since 2007. Um, so it should be a really good game. Of course, you want to see Coastal win um, to see how it shakes out towards the end of the season and have as many undefeated group of five teams as possible, just because that would be fun. Um, but I'll give the edge to the name um, of App State to win this game, but definitely a lot of fun to see this game matter right now in this season. And also it's significant because of the coaching search that's going on at South Carolina right now. Um, one of the names that has come up is the head coach um, of Coastal Carolina. Um, and so the more success he has, does that mean it's more likely for him to go to South Carolina or vice versa? Uh, it's, I'm not sure. That's a debate that we can have another day or just down in the comment section down below. 
And the other group of five game that's somewhat similar is Cincinnati and UCF. Cincinnati in this situation is the undefeated team looking for playoff aspirations um, that are very important this week because the a friendly reminder that the college football playoff rankings debut this Tuesday. The first rankings that will have long-term effects on the end of the season. Um, so be sure to watch that on Tuesday. Um, see where your team comes in the top 25 by the playoff committee's rankings. Um, but Cincinnati, they need to give a good pitch to that committee and try to get as high of an initial ranking as possible. Um, because the better that the higher the ranking, the better for them, and the better chances they have to actually make the playoff come the end of the season. With that being said, you've got to beat UCF. UCF would give a great, great win to your resume um, because of the history of UCF over the past four to five years um, with a program really that was good before Scott Frost um, came down and back up with um, when Scott Frost was there um, and has sustained success since Scott Frost has left. I don't know how many S's I just put in that sentence. That's a lot of alliteration there for you. But um, anyway, again, this game, you want Cincinnati um, to win to have good playoff aspirations. Um, but UCF has had more success over five years. With that being said, Luke Fickle is a really great coach and another coach um, that wouldn't be too surprised if he pops up in some co coaching searches. Um, across the nation if more jobs open up in this pandemic field year. And the last little group of five game that I want to keep an eye on is Liberty at NC State. I think this is the final game that Liberty plays this season that will be against a Power 5 opponent. They've already beat, I believe, two teams. Um, and so if they beat a third team um, that's in the Power 5, Liberty, an undefeated Liberty team, with Coach Hugh Freeze, another name to keep your eye on in the coaching carousel. Um, if he wins this game, there's no reason they shouldn't be able to win out um, with the rest of their schedule. And then where do you put the flames come the postseason? Um, as much chaos as possible just makes it very fun and entertaining. So you want the flames to win this game um, for that scenario. Of course, if you're NC State, <laughs> you don't want that to happen. Um, but keep an eye on it and see if they can pull uh, yet another upset against a Power 5 opponent. Last game I want to highlight quickly is the USC game at Utah. Utah has yet to play a game. USC is somehow 2-0. and um, And my personal um, opinion would be I would really prefer USC to lose this game. Because USC, listen to me, is the definition of mediocrity right now. They've kept the same coach who has kept them at the same level. Um, and that level is not exactly elite. So I would prefer, if, say, they lose this game to Utah, that by the end of the season perhaps they would want to get a new coach that perhaps would elevate them um, to being elite once again. I personally would like to see that happen. I would love to have USC get a new coach and give some good competition, maybe perhaps form a little rivalry with Oregon in the coming years as Oregon continues to progress um, towards making the playoff. So from that perspective and, you know, parity in college football, would love to see perhaps USC maybe need a regime change um, in order to get to that level. Um, if that's what it takes, I would like to see it. Um, so from that perspective, I would, I, I'm kind of cheering for Utah to upset um, USC in this game. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's like if Clay Hilton does stay at USC, I, I, I don't know how they progress. I don't know how they keep going. Um, I think you're going to get what you're going to get when you have Clay Hilton. And that definition of mediocrity, I think, should not be the standard at USC. Um, I don't think it's something you should settle for. Um, I hate mediocrity, and I think you should always achieve, try to achieve more. So from that perspective, um, I'd like to see Utah win this game. But USC, being in Los Angeles, having a good enough coaching staff, they have talent. And that's why they're able to win games. Um, so let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. What games you're most excited to see um, this week? Um, your 
thoughts perhaps on the mediocrity of USC. I think that's a theme that's been running throughout that program for a significant amount of time now. Um, basically after Pete Carroll. So uh, let me know any, any of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and consider subscribing for more in-depth college football content. So until next time, um, be good now.